A brand image built on extravagance, craftsmanship, and a remarkable amount of success. For the past two decades, Bentley sells over 70,000 first and second generation Continentals. It's an unprecedented number for a luxury saloon and makes it one of the most successful grand tourers of the modern era. But now, the Mark must update their iconic ride without sacrificing the key ingredients that helped it become so popular. For nearly 20 years, the Continental platform has been known for combining graceful exterior styling and a sophisticated luxury interior with a spirited, high-performance ride. All quintessential Grand Touring attributes. The original brief was very simple. Design the ultimate Grand Tourer. The contemporary Continental story starts in 1998 when the auto conglomerate Volkswagen snatches Bentley up as part of a £430 million deal. At the time, the famed English automaker is a niche player. It takes five long years, but in 2003, the first-gen Continental debuts. This really is the first modern Bentley. It took everything that was great about our lineage and our heritage and put it in a much more usable and compact form. The machine radically reimagines the high-end luxury grand touring space, offering a wicked combination of elegance and unprecedented speed. The extraordinary thing about that first generation GT is just how it moved the game on. The machine certainly moves the game along. At the time of its introduction, the Gen 1 Conti is the world's most powerful four-seat coupe, running from 0 to 60 miles per hour in under five seconds and hitting a 197 mile per hour top speed. Remarkable performance numbers for the era, which helps turn Bentley around. Years ago, you'd be lucky to see a Bentley. It would be such a rare occurrence. But with the Conti, people start to see these driving around London. Over a 15-year period, the Mark produces over 70,000 machines, making the Conti one of the most successful ultra-luxury saloons of its era. You don't see cars in the two, three hundred thousand dollar range that sell 70,000 units over their lifetime. 10, 20, maybe, but not 70. As the machine carves out its own niche, other car makers like Aston Martin, Ferrari, and even Rolls-Royce take notice. Now the Hunter become the Hunter. The aging platform isn't just pursued by competitors, but also Father Time. No matter how good a car is, there comes a time where it's just obsolete. And it can be in ways we don't see. It can be for crash test reasons, or efficiency, or the electrical architecture that underpins it. The Continental is the brand's most treasured asset. Miss the mark on its replacement, and you don't just lose fans, but also potentially the mark's pop culture currency. How do you do Gen 3? and change the recipe, but not screw it up. Not screwing up the most successful grand touring recipe is a delicate balancing act. On one hand, the machine needs to look and feel more contemporary, yet it also can't alienate previous Bentley owners. A lot of people think, and the designer sits down and do a fantastic sketch, the job is done. But it is much, much more. I mean, you have to develop a complete concept. So this is a kind of big uh, artistic statement in the end of the day. For the Gen 3 Conti to succeed, designers must look into the proverbial crystal ball and determine what drivers will find beautiful in the future. The interesting question is how does society develop, how does society change? This is more difficult. We have our own feeling as designer, almost like truffle pigs. We feel very well what are the changes from, let's say, trend point of view. Designer JP Gregory is the man asked to revise the exterior shape of the car. I felt like I had a, enough experience uh, as a designer to, to execute what I wanted. But at the same time, um, I was still young and fresh, um, arguably still young and fresh. And I think um, that kind of cocktail was, was the perfect kind of spark point for the start of the project. 
the sketch phase of the design process. You're almost foraging around for ingredients. It then gets to the point where you define your ingredients list, as it were. You choose a design theme, but the journey's far from over. And once you have all of those ingredients in a pot, you have to let it stew. And it's the same with design. You need that time and that consideration and, and chance to, to step back. Stepping back starts on paper, but soon moves into the digital world. Then to full-size clay models. All in the hopes of finding the right stance for the new Conti and the perfect design theme to wrap around the machine's mechanical layout. Proportions is something a human being understands. People will be able to say a racehorse is more elegant proportion-wise than a donkey. To create a more contemporary proportion, the team decides to lower the bonnet, utilize a shorter front fascia overhang, and create a more aggressive overall stance. All clever ways to modernize a machine designed to please new buyers and loyal fans. The proportions which you know only exist here on the GT, they're custom made for this car. It's quite a rare thing, it's a unique thing. It gave us the chance to, to affect the proportions positively. I mean, you only need to look at that side view just to see the character and the stance of that car.